now that we understand food energy and the idea of calories in, calories out, and our energy balance, let's talk about the kinds of energy we should be putting in our body. Now, all foods have energy and calories, but they're not all created equal. Some are obviously much more healthy than other, others. The calories we want to put in our body are things that are dense in nutrients, such as fiber, protein, vitamins, and minerals. Now, what is a nutrient? Well, our definition of a nutrient is a substance obtained from food that is used within the body to, to promote growth, maintenance, and repair. Now, there are, within the realm of nutrients, there are also a, a couple subcategories. The first one is macronutrients. Macro means big, so these are the major things that we eat. These are the things our body needs high amount of. And macronutrients are split into three groups. The first one is carbohydrates. Now carbohydrates are what we use to have instant energy throughout the day. It, it helps fuel our body, it gives us energy to move, it gives our body fuel that it can call on right away. Protein is the builders of our body. It helps promote muscle growth and repair, repair other parts of our body and keep us strong and healthy. And fat, even though it may get a bad name, is very important to our body as well. We need some fat in our body, and it's important to have um, some long-term storage available or long-term energy available if the body ever needs it. Healthy fat levels in the body also help promote healthy organs and other bodily, body systems. The other subcategory of nutrients is micronutrients. Now, if macro means big, we know micro means small. Now, this doesn't mean that these aren't important. It just means that our bodies need them in a smaller amount. Can you think of anything that might be a micronutrient? But things like vitamins and minerals that are found in a lot of our healthy foods are really, really important to keeping us strong, healthy, and it also helps our immune system. So the major focus of today's lesson is MyPlate. MyPlate is a diagram that helps us guide our food choices and helps us eat a balanced diet where we get all the nutrients that we need. Now we're gonna do an activity with my plate as we keep coming back to this, but if you have that plate that you wrote your meal on, I want you to take a minute to divide it into four parts as seen here. If you don't have a plate, you can simply draw a circle on your piece of paper and divide that circle into four parts. Now notice I added an another small circle to the top left quadrant. Go ahead and do that real quick. So let's take a closer look at the actual MyPlate diagram. And you can use this diagram to copy down the major food categories on your plate or on your piece of paper. So let's take a look. In the top left, you see the color red, and that is symbolized by fruits. Fruits should make up at least a quarter of our diet. Below that, in green, we see vegetables. So together, fruits and vegetables should make up half of our diet. In the top right side, we have the orange category that we call grains. Now grains are our major group that we get most of our macronutrients called carbohydrates. So grains are things like bread, cereals, oats, rice, things of that nature. And then the bottom purple section is protein. Protein often comes from animals, but can also come from plant sources. Proteins are the building blocks of our bodies. And the small circle, kind of outside of the plate, is what we call our dairy. Now, the reason they put it in that circle, because oftentimes the easiest way to get our dairy is to drink milk. But it's not always milk. It can be cheese, it can be yogurt. Anything that comes from milk is considered a part of the dairy group. So let's talk a little bit more about each one of these food groups in a little bit more depth. Let's start with just fruits and vegetables. What are some of the benefits of eating fruits and vegetables? Well, fruits and vegetables are sources of many essential nutrients, especially vitamins. Most are naturally low in fat, sodium, and calories, and contain heart healthy fiber. Frozen options of fruits and vegetables are just as nutritious as fresh ones are. So if that's easier for you, or, or you enjoy those more, you should go for that. But eating a diet rich in vegetables and fruits is part of an overall healthy diet it may reduce risk of heart disease, including heart attacks and stroke. Eating a variety of colors is really important when picking fruits and vegetables because the different colors will give us different micronutrients, which is really important. Let's take a look at protein. Protein functions as a building blocks for our bones, muscles, cartilage, skin, and blood. 
To get protein, select lean meat, such as chicken and turkey. Also try non-meat proteins, such as fish, eggs, nuts, beans, peas, and seeds. Protein is that purple group, which should make up about a fourth of our diet. Now dairy, as we talked about, is the, the one that's off to the side in a cup. And the easiest way to get our dairy is from milk, but there's other choices as well. The biggest benefit of dairy is it provides us calcium, vitamin D, and protein. Milk is important for bone health, especially during childhood and adolescence. For those sensitive to dairy, calcium can be found in many dark green leafy vegetables, calcium fortified orange juice, and lactose free fortified non dairy replacements such as soy milk. Now let's talk about the grains group. Grains are a good source of energy. They are used to make bread, cereal, and pastas that we eat. Grains are divided into two groups, whole grains and refined grains. Whole grain products include all parts of the grain and have more B vitamins, fiber, and protein than refined grains, which only contain some part of the grain. Now what about the things that you eat that don't fall into these categories? Think about soda pop, candy, sweets, ice cream, things that have a lot of sugar in them. Where do they fall? Well, they're not included in the MyPlate diagram because we don't look at them as um, essential things to be eating. Now, we all know that some of us indulge in these things once in a while, but it's important to not eat too much of them. We call these things empty calories. Empty calories are calories that we are still going into our body, but that don't benefit our body in any way. And oftentimes, can hurt our body if we eat too many of them. So they're foods which supply calories, but have very little nutrients. It'd be a good time to get up on our feet and take a little brain break before we start our lesson activity. So once again, make sure you have some space to move. We're going to get up and get our blood flowing so that we can finish this lesson strong.